What is up? Methodmo here with another Space Jump album reaction. Today we're listening to the new What's So Not album titled All the Beautiful Things. What's So Not is an extremely influential trap and future based artist. I have a number of favorites from him, including his club with Arl Grime, Tell Me. Gemini EP is also fantastic if you ever listen to that. When it comes to melody, hard sounds, and creativity all in one package, there's few and far people that come in sort of the same league as What's So Not. That's why I'm extremely excited to listen to this album today. We got 12 new tracks. Let's get right into it. What's So Not, All the Beautiful Things, first reaction, let's go. First track is Warlord featuring Slumberjack. Already very funky. Really classic What's So Not sounds, but very cinematic too. Very cool intro, surprisingly glitchy. This is so pretty. So many little cuts to different sections to this. That was a fantastic intro. Short and sweet, only about two minutes and 30 seconds song. Really displayed full on what What's So Not Sounds all, all about. I think Slumberjack might have came in with the drums and made it a little bit more cinematic perhaps. Next up, Be Okay Again with Daniel Johns on vocals. <laughs> no way. Here we go. Ooh, those are sexy synths. this synth. I don't even know if I love the vocals that much, but this is fun. This is a fun song. This little barefoot music. What? Ah, that almost broke my speakers. I don't even think the vocal in its raw form was that good, but cut into this song and how it was sequenced. This this song is crazily sequenced actually, like it's like a non-stop just rise in energy, which I really liked. Next up is Beautiful featuring Winona Oak. Alright, this vocal is dank already. I did not expect house on this. Well, this is a smooth club track, isn't it? That might have been my favorite so far. I could see that song being very, very flexible, played in all sorts of settings. Really rides between that more aggressive house and that more melodic, happy, barefoot Coachella house, per se. So I can definitely picture playing this. Big festivals down to, you know, just you and your friends just cruising into cars. Also a great example of how to make, you know, a vocal lead sort of drop, not annoying. Next up, Stuck in Orbit featuring Bowie. Might be in the pop track right now. This might be the pop one. That's a little bit of Odessa, to be honest. Ooh, I like this part. Bowie is slaying it right now. Great vocal choice. And again, another dope outro. I feel my least favorite. I think this one's for the girls. It was executed pretty well, considering that Bowie just completely slayed. But nothing too amazing as far as production goes and the sequencing. First meh of the album, for sure. Next up is Demons with James Earl on production, and then Rome Fortune and Tommy Swisher with vocals. Oh, it's over. Huh. That song kind of sounded a little sort of mixtape-y. It didn't really sound like a full-fledged album hip-hop track. Beat, nothing too spectacular. They're the first song that I'm not a fan of really at all. Next up, What's or Not and Skrillex. 
a lot of hype around this song. I think this was teased somewhere and people kept posting it on Reddit. Keep getting upvotes. Have not heard any snippets, so let's get into it. Well, this is about to be very high energy. Banger. This vocal is very interesting though. Very eccentric. The build's so quick too. What the hell? This packing so much into one song. This is wild. This is what happens when you get two of the best producers in the game and they just pack as much into three minutes as possible. That was, that's Skrillex and What's Not Together. Nothing much else to say. I was hoping actually when I heard like Diplo and Skrillex were gonna do something, I was hoping it was gonna be something more like this where they're packing a lot of different vibes and energies. Um, that happy parties and blending that happy party sound with the dark crazy. They did a couple songs on the Jack U album, but this, this here is beautiful and I'm excited to see it live because this is hella fun. Next up is We Keep On Running featuring Toto. I don't think it's Toto that I think it is, but, right? It's not Toto that does that uh, Rain in Africa song, right? This is totally Toto, are you serious? This is so intolerable, other than the fact that it's Toto. Alright, I really just couldn't mesh with that tempo. It was a little too slow. Shoehorned a little bit too much rock into it. I could have definitely have done without listening to that song. If You Only with San Holo, another big ticket collaboration. Oh, turn this up. Interesting snares. What's well, not in San Holo? You're gonna get, get hard trap drops and guitars, and that's what we got. No complaints if you're a fan of either of them. Check out this song. Next up is Monsters featuring Michael Christmas. If that's Michael Christmas from Boston, it's a rapper. And Toby Lou. Good soul to it. Would you switch up his flow a little bit? Monster. Monster. I like the little lead in the back. I don't know if you can play this in the smoke set. Might just be like a solo vibes kind of song. Something you play by yourself. Honestly, probably my least favorite song of the album. I don't think the beat was that standout-ish, and the rapping was kind of wonky. Next up, Bottom End featuring Dyro, one of the most underrated producers still to this day is Dyro. I feel like the hip-hop songs were, have kind of been like interludes to the rest of the songs, which I don't mind. I don't mind a little break with hip-hop. So cinematic. That was a clinic. That was a clinic right there. That really just shows you creativity, melody, super hard sounds. What's well, not in Dairo? 
Definitely want to listen to that song more because that song has room to grow and it's already pretty good. Next up is Same Mistakes featuring Daniel Johns for the third time. Kind of an anti-dropper of some sort. Hey. Very ambient. Kind of messy. That drop is a little discombobulated, but it makes sense just based on some of the lyrics that Daniel Johns was singing. Definitely not my favorite of the album, I'm going to say. I do like how it really stripped down and built back up around a minute into the song. Pretty interesting and creative. Really had me anticipating the drop, even though I didn't enjoy it. That song is Us featuring Daniels. This is kind of what I was hoping the other hip hop songs were kind of be like. So I can see it really fitting into What's or Not's style. That's pretty. Reminds a little bit of Chrome Sparks, this part right here. Which, I'm super excited for that album, Chrome Sparks. That's gonna be great. Oh shit! This is dope. What an outro, actually. Definitely a cool outro to the whole album. That's better wrapping up. I don't think I'll be revisiting it. Just a little too too slow. I think the last drop didn't need to be four on the floor drums. That whole first. 16 bars, it could have just been like four kicks in a row and then to the hip-hop beat rather than just that whole time I didn't, wasn't sure if I was supposed to dance or just kind of bop to it, you know Overall, this is definitely my favorite What's or Not project I'm already gonna be adding Warlord with Summerjack, Be Okay Again Beautiful with Winona Oak was amazing Go with Skrillex, super crazy What's or Not and Hans Solo's song was pretty interesting Bottom End with Dyer was really, really cool I like Same Mistakes with Daniel Johns as well It's a wonderfully produced album and definitely in contention for best album of the year if we gotta start making that list and I'm putting this on there. What do you guys think of the album? Did it live up to the hype? What was your favorite song of the album? Because I'm actually curious because this project is super, super stacked. So I'm really curious to see what you guys really liked about this album. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. This has been a Space Jump reaction to Not All the Beautiful Things. I'll see you guys next time.